So this morning we're talking about Empowered to Serve, if you've seen in your bulletins. And um, some of the things that came out during worship in that word talked about serving, talked about going to that next level. And we've been talking a lot about that in our past series. We've been talking about going to that next level and um, just pressing into God. And we've been talking about preparing our hearts for God, taking us to that next place. Because 2022 is that year of the open door. And that means those new opportunities that God is calling us to step through those doors. And we talked about how each time we step through a door of new opportunity, there's always going to be opposition that comes against us. And so we need to be empowered to serve. Amen? We need to be empowered to serve. And so um, we're going to talk a little bit about today a message that is familiar to many people, and it's going to be a review for you. It might be something new to some of you. And so um, I just felt like uh, this was the time to do this, and so I just pray that um, God opens our eyes and shows us truth as we're going through this topic. And um, for those of you who this is going to be a review for, what I'd like you to do with this message is I'd like you to take this message and use it to help you to share this message with other people and to lead other people in this message. Amen? And for those of you who it's new to, I would love to see you respond. We had some people respond this morning, and um, you'll understand a little bit more as we go through this, but we're going to start with John chapter 16, verse 7. John chapter 16, verse 7. And this is what the Scripture says. This is Jesus speaking, and He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Amen? Amen. So this is right before Jesus left, right before Jesus went to the cross, and he's talking to his disciples. Now, these are men that have left families and businesses and everything else behind them to follow this man. And they've been following him for about three years. And now all of a sudden, he turns to them and says, it's expedient for you that I go away. And so I'm sure that the initial reaction that they probably had was that of shock. Why? Because they had left everything to follow this man. And now all of a sudden, he's saying, I have to go. And they also had a a preconceived idea, uh, a wrong interpretation of the Old Testament Scripture that he was going to stay and establish his kingdom. And so all of this was very difficult for them to understand when he said, it's expedient for you that I go away. But look why he said, it's expedient that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. The comforter that's being talked about here is the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus is saying, I have to go so that the Holy Spirit can come. Amen? And I believe that that message is just as real for us today as it was back then. It was just as important for Jesus to go and for the Holy Spirit to come now as it was back then. Amen? We need to rely on and to depend on the Holy Spirit in our lives. He tells his disciples, again, it's crucial for me to go away so that the Holy Spirit can come. And what I want you to understand this morning is that statement is missional. It's all about mission. It's all about what Jesus had come to accomplish. Even though Jesus was going away, even though Jesus was going to the cross, his mission was just beginning. Did you hear what I said? Jesus' mission didn't end when he went to the cross. Jesus' mission just began when he went to the cross and the Holy Spirit came. Amen? And now he carries on his mission through you and through me. That is the power of the cross, that Jesus Christ died on the cross. He did die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, but there's so much more to him dying on the cross because the great and mighty Holy Spirit was released from heaven. And now the Bible says that all of those who've called upon the name of the Lord, they are now temples of the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit lives in you if you're a born-again believer. God's Spirit lives in you. I love it. I love to think about it because the Bible tells us that the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you, lives in me. Isn't that a powerful, amazing, wonderful revelation or truth? And so we should be excited about it. Just crack me a smile or something out there. Hey, yeah, some of you look like you're still on screensaver. 
<laughs> so, John 16, verse 7. It's expedient that I go. Going down a little bit more in that chapter to verses 13 and 14. The Bible tells us this, however, when He, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you in all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will tell you things to come. Mm. He will tell you what? Things to come. What are we? We're a new horizon church. We're looking out to the things that are going to come. And this is what the Holy Spirit does. This is the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. He not only teaches us what's here, but He shows us what's to come. Amen? That's what we desire at Transformation Church, to enter into this place of what this passage is talking about. But whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for He will take of what is mine and declare it to you. And so there is... A, a leading into all truth that comes through the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is here to lead us into all truth. Are you relying on and depending on and asking the Holy Spirit to open your eyes and to give you understanding as you read the Scriptures? Or it could even be on your job. I know that Pastor Tim does this all the time, that there are different things that he encounters and navigates, and he's asking the Lord to do so. He's asking the Lord to give him wisdom. What's the next step? And God downloads strategies on the inside of him. I, I, I was talking to him not too long ago about a strategy that the Holy Spirit gave him at work that's causing him to be able to be blessed and to make more money at work because he listened to what the Holy Spirit said. So on all different occasions, in every different area, especially for the mission that God has given us here on this earth, to seek and to save the lost, the Holy Spirit will guide and direct us and give us wisdom and lead us into all truth. Can you believe that? He plays a critical role in fulfilling the mission that Jesus died for us to fulfill. The Holy Spirit, again, will lead us into all truth. He will open our eyes to understand and to live out the mission that we've been called to. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. And I know that um, Easter's coming, and then I know that Pentecost Sunday is after that, but I just felt like this was a message that God wanted me to preach today. Amen? And so, again, if you've heard this message, if you've already experienced this in your own life, bless you. You, you are blessed as a result of that. But I want you to take these notes. I want you to pour over them. I want you to learn how to share them with other people and lead them into this same experience. Amen? So Acts 1, chapter, four th or chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. This is after Jesus had died. He was buried. He was resurrected, right? And then he reappeared to the disciples after he was resurrected. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so here it's talking about being baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I want to let you know this morning that this is a separate experience from being saved. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But in verse 6 it says, Then he gathered around and asked him, Lord, are you going to it, restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It's not for you to know the times or seasons, the times or dates. The Father has set by his own authority. But verse 8 is what I'm getting to. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You will be my witnesses. And so the Holy Spirit came, and the power of the Holy Spirit went into them. And they were raised up to be witnesses. This is just a promise that that's going to happen. This hasn't happened yet in chapter 1. This is Jesus saying, wait, wait, wait for the Holy Spirit to come. And so they waited in that upper room in Jerusalem. And in verse 2, we see the fulfillment of that. Verse 2, or chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly 
there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the first encounter that the people had with the baptism of the Holy Spirit was right here after Jesus had gone. And remember what he said, it's expedient that I go away. It's very important, it's crucial for you that I go away because if I don't go away, the Comforter will not come. This is missional. This is what Jesus is saying. We need the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It's important. It was important to Jesus. He said it was critical. It was expedient. And it's important to us as believers. Notice how they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? I believe that every single person who receives Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior has the Holy Spirit living inside of them and that they are temples of the Holy Spirit. But I also believe that in this experience, there is an infilling, there is an overflowing of the Holy Spirit in our lives that's a different experience from what we've experienced in the past. And I believe that God wants us to enter into this experience because He wants to use us in the world around us. And look why. This is power with a purpose. It's not power to draw attention to yourself. It's not power to get gain for yourself. It's not power for any other reason than the purpose that's stated right here. And God poured out His Holy Spirit upon them so that they would be witnesses to the world around them. And so the very purpose of the Holy Spirit being poured out was to, to empower us to be His witnesses. We need the baptism of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Again, this experience was meant to open their eyes and to lead them into all truth. It was meant to empower them to be witnesses. If you read chapter 2, it goes on to tell us that they rolled out onto the streets of Jerusalem speaking in other tongues. And when Peter preached a message to the crowds, it says that over 3,000 people or around 3,000 people were saved on that day. Do you think they were empowered to be witnesses? Amen. Hey, let's go downtown Grove City. I don't think there's that many people downtown Grove City, right? But God orchestrated everything perfectly because it was, the, the festival was going on in Jerusalem and there were people from all different nations who had come to that place. And it says that they rolled out on the streets speaking in other tongues and, and, and some of them said this must be from God. Other people said they must be drunk. And then Peter rose up and said it's only nine o'clock. They're not drunk as you suppose, but this is what was been spoken by the prophet Joel, right? And then he goes down and he, he repeats that, that prophecy of the prophet Joel, right? And, and, and he talks about how this is right now happening. And through over, about 3,000 people were, received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior on the spot. They were empowered to be his witnesses. And if you read through the rest of the book of Acts, you see amazing and wonderful things that happen as a result of that experience that they had in that upper room. And everything that you follow, if you go through that book of Acts and you read over that book of Acts, you will see all of the amazing and powerful things that came as a result of this encounter, this experience that they had with the Holy Spirit. Go to Acts chapter 8. We're going to look at verses 14 to 17. Acts chapter 8. This is Philip going from place to place. And when Philip went from one place to another place, he preached the gospel. And in this particular place, he had gone to Samaria. And the Samaritans, if you don't know, were enemies of the Jews. The Jews did not like the Samarians. And if, if a Jew came into contact with a Sumerian, they were unclean, right? And so they had to go through ritual cleaning and all those things. And so they didn't get along. These two groups of people didn't get along. But here we have Philip going to Samaria and preaching the gospel. And here's what you hear in verse 14. Now when the apostles, this is after Philip had already preached the gospel, after they had already received the word of God, and then this is what happened. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down 
prayed for them that they may, might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Philip preached the gospel to them, and it says they received the word of God. Let me interpret they received the word of God to you. They received the word of God meant that they received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen? That's what received the word of God meant. And after they had received the word of God, after they had been saved, right, then Peter and John came to pray for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. And so this was a separate experience from them being saved. In fact, it says here that when they came down, they realized that the Holy Spirit had not fallen upon any of them, that these people had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They had been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That is when you do what we do at the end of each one of our services here at Transformation Church, and you have an opportunity to pray and ask God to forgive you of your sins. Right? Come into your life and be your Lord and Savior. And you are saved. You're born again. Right? You're baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. That's what that means. And so after they had already been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, Peter and John come and they lay hands on them. Right? See what it says here. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. They laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And so the, 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 the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes through the laying on of hands many times. I would say most times. Now, obviously, the initial time, there was nobody to lay their hands on them. And so the Holy Spirit just came in tongues of fire. But as you see and study out the Scripture, you'll see that the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the laying on of the disciples' hands, the laying on of somebody's hands. Amen? And so they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. The disciples laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now, what does it mean that they received the Holy Spirit? How did you know that they received the Holy Spirit? I believe that right there on the spot, they prayed in tongues. And the reason why I believe that is because there was a man named Simon the sorcerer who went to the disciples and he said, I want to give you money so that I can have that same power that you have. I'm going to give you money so that I can lay my hands on people and this will happen to them. Obviously, something happened. Obviously, they, he saw something, heard something. Something happened in the lives of the people that they prayed for that was visual that he could say, I want what you have and I want to be able to do what you just did. And Peter said, may your money perish with you because you can't buy the gift of God. And I believe Simon repented, and uh, hopefully we'll see him in heaven someday. Hopefully we'll see Simon the sorcerer in heaven someday, but he's not Simon the sorcerer anymore. He's Simon the saint. Amen. Amen. Woo, my message just disappeared. <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> So being born again and being baptized with the Holy Spirit are two totally different experiences. They're not the same. The baptism of the Holy Spirit often, again, comes through the laying on of hands. That was true for me. I remember my experience. I, I was actually prayed for three times um, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The first time I was prayed for was by my friend and my roommate, and um, he was excited about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He knew that I had been newly saved, and he wanted to pray for me to receive the Holy Spirit. And so I said, yeah, sure. We lived right downtown, right above the old Kafaro's Pizza there. Um, it wasn't Kafaro's Pizza then. I think it was a hobby shop. But he prayed for me to receive. He, he went through the scriptures, taught me a few things, and then he prayed for me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And um, I was blessed by his prayer, but I didn't receive a prayer language at that time. Um, and so I went to Slippy Rock University, grad school, and I also went to a Christian fellowship there called New Life. And um, in our small groups, uh, another friend of mine, Felicia, she was leading the small group, and she asked me if I would like, if she would like me to, if I would like her to pray with me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I said yes. So right there in the small group, she prayed for me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I was blessed by her prayer. But I didn't receive, um, I didn't receive my prayer language at that time. And then I was at a prayer and praise meeting, which was a campus thing as well. 
and we were, uh, Pastor Mike would come in and he would share the word and then we would all worship. And right in the middle as we were worshiping at one of these prayer and praise meetings, Pastor Mike came up and said, would you like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And I said, yes, I would. And so th- they all started praying for me. And um, as they were praying for me, I felt something stirring on the inside of me. You know, I felt something stirring inside, and I wasn't sure what it was. I didn't know what it was, and I felt this desire to speak because I felt like there was something that was coming up, and I was supposed to open my mouth and speak, but I was afraid to, and so I kept my mouth shut, and so I didn't really say anything, and um, here's what I said. I whispered a little prayer as, as everybody was praying around me. I said, Lord, I want what you want. God, I don't want anything that's not from you, but I do want what you want. I do want what you have for me. So, God, if this is what you have for me, then, God, I pray that you would help me in this. And so I felt that stirring continue and rising up in me. So eventually I just whispered something out, right? I whispered something out that was I felt was on my heart and and upon my mouth. And so I opened my mouth. And as I whispered something out, not loud enough for anybody around me to hear it, but whispered something out, all of a sudden, bam, it just started coming. So I started to speak in tongues. On a, fl- you know, very fluently, and so I was just, it just kind of poured out of my mouth, and um, they continued to pray for me for a little bit, and then they went back to singing, and I was still there doing my thing, and um, they all got done singing, and I was still there doing my thing, but when the music died down, I died down, and um, then somebody came up to me and asked me a question in English, and I went to answer them, but it didn't come out in English. I don't know what it came out in, and then, then, then I was able to readjust and answer their question, but I was really touched by the Holy Spirit in that experience, and that experience was a powerful, powerful experience that I had that has blessed and influenced my life as a Christian and caused me to enter into a place where I'm walking with God and trusting Him every step that I take, amen? And and He's empowered me to be a witness for Him, and I believe that God wants that for every single person that's listening to my voice right now, amen? So one of the things that happened as well is um, I noticed in the days and weeks to come after I had that experience that the line between right and wrong in my life, personally, this is my story, so this is what happened to me, the, the, the line between right and wrong in my life started to narrow. And I started to see more clearly as to what was right and what was wrong in God's sight. And so God started, the Holy Spirit started to help me to die to the things that I saw that were wrong and to begin to live to the things that I knew were right. Amen? That's my experience. That's what I experienced when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I believe since it is a baptism in the Holy Spirit, an infilling of the Holy Spirit, I believe that um, the fruit of the Spirit just kind of was ignited on the inside of me through that experience. And so God started to do a work in me that was a, a, a work of sanctification, Um, where he just continued to set me apart um, after that experience more and more and more to the place where I was walking less in this world and more with him. Amen? Another thing that I've noticed in my walk with God through this experience that I had was this. There's this, this tongue thing, and the tongues thing is just a small part of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, but it's an important part. And the Bible teaches us that we're supposed to Um, pray, and when we pray in tongues, it says that we're supposed to pray for the interpretation, right? And so um, there's a number of different ways that that can happen, but when I'm back there in that prayer room, I'm praying in tongues. When I'm up here, I'm praying quietly, right? I'm praying quietly in tongues because it says that when you pray in tongues, it edifies the believer, amen? But Paul said, I'd rather speak five intelligible words in the church than 10,000 words in tongues, Because in the church, I'd rather speak five intelligible words so that I might encourage somebody and so that I might edify somebody and give them direction than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue, right? And so when we're in the church service, I don't normally speak in tongues out loud enough for anybody to hear it because the Bible says that I'd rather, Paul says I'd rather speak five intelligible words than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. And so I don't want to be a stumbling block to somebody who's not familiar with this. And so I'm not going to, in the assembly, I'm not going to speak in an unknown tongue out loud to put a stumbling block in somebody 
somebody's path that maybe isn't a believer, that's maybe an outsider that doesn't understand exactly what this is all about. And so I don't want to put a stumbling block in their path, but I do pray up here under my breath in, in tongues. Why? Because it edifies me. And if it edifies me, I ask for the interpretation. And so I pray for God for the interpretation to come at the exact right moment in the exact right way that he's planned it so that people can experience breakthrough. Amen. There are so many people that are in need. There are so many people that need rescue. There are so many people that are hurting and that are lonely and that are sitting in darkness and are helpless and hopeless. And God has us to go to those people and to speak a word of life to them. But I'm praying in tongues and asking God, God, give me that word of life. Give me what you need. I, I, I know experiences. I've experienced this to some degree, and I've seen other people experience this, where God has given us words for people that there's no way that we could have possibly known that about their lives, but yet God gave us insight into their lives by giving us a word. And, and when we speak that word, word of, word of knowledge to them, and, and that's something that was only known to them, and that just opens them up where there used to be a hardened heart where they were Defend, they had walls up and they wouldn't allow the gospel in. But now they hear this word that's spoken to them and it just breaks all that. And it allows them to let those walls down and to receive what God has for them. Because the enemy lies. The enemy builds up strongholds around people. The enemy tries to keep people from getting free. But I'm telling you that God wants to use you to speak into people's lives in a powerful way. And I believe that speaking in tongues is one of those things that we can do and we can pray for the interpretation interpretation, and I believe that God will give us the interpretation at the exact right moment to bring breakthrough into somebody else's life. I don't know if anybody has a desire to be used by God in that way, but this is, I believe, something that God wants us to enter into as a body. Amen. Go to Acts 19. Acts 19. Uh, we're going to read a number of verses in Acts 19, and this is the last passage of scripture that we're going to read as we close but in Acts 19 this is the apostle Paul and he comes upon a group of disciples right and uh, we just want to take a little look at what occurs here as he begins to speak to these disciples pay close attention to this conversation Acts 19 chapter 1 chapter 19 verse 1 and it happened while Apollos and was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So he's just walking through this different area. He comes upon some disciples. And what is the very first question that he asked them? He doesn't talk about the weather. He doesn't talk about anything else. But he asks them, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? That's the very first question he asked them. So to me, again, just like Jesus saying, it's expedient that I go, that shows us that the Holy Spirit is so important in our lives. But how many of us have pressed in to actually know and to study and to learn about and understand who the Holy Spirit is and what is the job or the role of the Holy Spirit in the earth today because He's here. Amen? But all these places that we find in Scripture tell us how important the Holy Spirit is in the life of the Christian church. But we need to go after God and we need to seek after wisdom and understanding concerning the Holy Spirit. Because He's here with us right now. And He empowers us to be witnesses. Amen? And so that's the very first question that the Apostle Paul asked these disciples when he comes on them. Is that the first question you ask Christians when you come upon them? Crickets. I'm with you. That's not really the first question that I ask usually either. But that's something that we need to build on the inside of us to have a desire and a confidence to do that. Because this is what's going to empower the body of believers. This is what's going to empower us for these last days. This is what's going to empower us for all the things that are going to happen. I don't know if you're watching the news and if you're paying attention to what's going on, but there's some crazy things going on. There's some food shortages coming our way. There's some different things that are going to happen. And are you going to be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and follow Him to allow Him to provide for you every step that you take in the world that we live in right now? People need to have the Holy Spirit living in their lives 
to lead them and guide them and empower them to be witnesses for His glory. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And so check this out. This is some crazy stuff here. That's the first question that he asked them. And then we go down here to Acts 19, verse 2b. This is their response. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. These were John's disciples. We've not heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, to, or Paul said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And so in this exchange, Paul finds out that these disciples of John haven't even been born again. Not only have they not received the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but they haven't even been born again. They've only been baptized into a baptism of repentance that John baptized them with, and he said to believe on the one who's about to come, right? And so now Paul is in this position that they know that they're supposed to believe in the one that's to come, right? And so in verse 5, Paul answers, and he says, oh no, not verse 5, verse 4. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that you should believe on him who would come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. So he reveals to them that Christ Jesus is the one to come after John the Baptist and that the one that they're supposed to believe upon, right? And they haven't even been born again. So here's what it says. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. What does being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus mean? Being born again, being saved, yes. So they baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They did what John told them to do, right? They were disciples of John. They did what John the Baptist told them to do. They believed on the one that was coming after him. They got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior on the spot. So when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul prayed with them to receive Jesus. This group of disciples got saved. However, Paul wasn't done. After they prayed to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, Paul then laid hands on them. Look at Acts 19.6. After they had already received Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about 12 in all. And so after praying with these men to get saved, Paul then laid his hands on them. Does this sound familiar? Go back to Acts chapter 8 and read that. After they had received Jesus Christ, the disciples laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. And so the same thing happened here. There was just less time that took place between those because Philip had to call Peter and John to come and to pray for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. And so there, there was a little bit of time. Here, it's one right after another. And a lot of times in the scriptures, you'll see that one call did it all, right? What I mean by that is they did everything right at once. You'd, get, you, you'd receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. If there was some water around, they'd, they, they'd take you under the water, bring you back up, baptize you in water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, because that's how the Bible tells us to baptize in water, right? So you get baptized in water in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then they would lay hands on you and pray for you, and the Holy Spirit would come, and you'd be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in other tongues. Powerful. Again, how do we know they were baptized by the Holy Spirit? They began to speak in other tongues, and they prophesied. Speaking in tongues is the initial evidence of being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Why was this so important to Paul? Because he knew that people needed the baptism to fulfill the mission that Jesus came with. And Jesus died for. And now, Jesus left so that the Holy Spirit could come. And now we need every bit of the Holy Spirit that we can possibly enter into. Ephesians 5 says to be ever filled with the Holy Spirit. Not to have one experience or this experience or that. To be ever filled. To be always filled. To be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? 
Because the Holy Spirit empowers us to be witnesses. And He leads us into all truth. We are desperate and need more of an understanding of who the Holy Spirit is. He convicts people of their sins and draws them closer to Him. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we need to have the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I'm telling you what, there have been times in my life where I didn't know what to pray. There have been times in my life where I was at my end and where I had done everything that I knew to do, but nothing was changing. And I'm talking about praying for people that I love. I'm talking about standing for people that I love. And they were in a bad place and they were going lower. And I was just in a desperate place because I had done everything that I knew to do, but nothing was changing. And so I had nothing left to do. So I started praying in the Holy Spirit. I started praying in the Holy Spirit, and, and, and then all of a sudden, peace started to come into my life. I started to experience His peace washing over me as I prayed in the Holy Spirit. When I didn't know what to do, when I had no peace, yet when I prayed in the Holy Spirit, peace washed over me, yeah. right? And then I began to see changes in the person that I was praying for, that I was believing God for, that I was standing for. God started to break things open in their lives, And there began to be breakthrough in their lives. And God gave me wisdom on what to say and when to say it and what to do and when to do it. This this came through praying in the Spirit. We are desperate for God. We are desperate for the Holy Spirit. We are desperate for praying in tongues and receiving the interpretation of those tongues. There are going to come a time in your life if there hasn't already. And I'm not speaking negative things over you. I'm just telling you how it is. Jesus said this as well. There are going to be troubling times. There are going to be difficult times that come knocking at your door. And what are you going to do when you've done all you know to do, but you still haven't seen any change take place? We need the Holy Spirit in our lives to intervene. I just want to close with five points. First, a a couple questions. First of all, have you been empowered to serve? I mean, if you go through the book of Acts and you see the things that they did, people need you to operate in the the Holy Spirit for their freedom. And if you walk through the book of Acts and you study it out, you will see the powerful things that happened through the disciples as a result of them being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Have you been empowered to serve? Have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Five points. Number one, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for everyone. When, when uh, Philip came to people that the Jews were enemies with, the Sumerians, right? They weren't anything. They were, they were enemies of the Jews. They were somebody that would technically make you unclean, right? They didn't hold any p- powerful positions, but yet Philip went to them, and he preached to them. And then after they got saved, he called Peter and John to pray for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. You see, it's for everyone. It's for you. Number two, the baptism with the Holy Spirit is separate from our salvation experience. You can see this all through the Scripture. And if you honestly study out the Scripture, there's no way that you can come to the conclusion that it's the same thing as your salvation experience. If you honestly study it and you seek it out, God will show you and you will see in the Scripture, it's very clear, it's very plain. And you'll be able to see the difference between the salvation experience and you being filled with the Holy Spirit. Number three, the initial evidence of being baptized with the Holy Spirit is speaking in other tongues, right? And so as God, the Bible says, speaking in other tongues, and what did it say? It says that they all spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And so the Spirit stirred within them and and brought that up to their lips. They had to open their mouths and speak. And when they opened their mouths and spoke, that's when the Holy Spirit began to move in a powerful way, just like happened to me. Again, it took me three times to to receive my prayer language, but I'll tell you what, when it came, it came. Because why? Because I I submitted myself to it. Because I came into agreement with it. Because I opened my mouth and I spoke and a flood just came forth. And it's changed my life forever. Number four, one purpose for being baptized with the Holy Spirit is for us to be led into all truth. And so our potential for revelation increases with this experience of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. And God leads us into all truth. Number five, another purpose for us being baptized with the Holy Spirit 
is to receive power to be his witnesses in the world around us. Now, you can be his witnesses. There are a lot of people who have never been baptized in the Holy Spirit who are powerful witnesses to the Lord Jesus Christ. There are. There's a lot of them, right? It's just a matter of what you do with your life, what you do with what God has given you, right? What I'm saying is there's a lot of people that don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit who are powerful witnesses, but I guarantee you that when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, your potential for being a witness increases exponentially, right? And I talked, I talked about... I talked about the idea of there's people that are sitting in darkness, there's people that are hurt, there's people that are broken, there's people who are hardened heart who will never receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior unless there's a gift of the Holy Spirit that's released into their life. For instance, you might say something to them that there's no way that you could possibly know, and they know that that's God, right? They know that that's God because you couldn't know what you just said to them. You can't know what you just said to them, but you said it anyway, and now that brings down all those walls. That penetrates that hardened heart, and that gets people saved, right? And so the gifts of the Spirit are also to be used to get people saved, to get people healed, to get people delivered, right? All of those things. And so when you are walking in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, your your, your power to witness is going to increase to the world around you. The first step in fulfilling God's call upon your life is what we've already read about today, and that's surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. That's asking Him to forgive you of your sins and to come into your life and to be your Lord and Savior. That's the first step that you have to take. As you've seen in the Scripture today, that was the first thing that happened. And then they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. If you've never surrendered your life and asked Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins, If you haven't asked him to come into your life and be your Lord and Savior, I believe that God is calling upon you to do that right now. So let's go ahead and bow our heads, close our eyes, and search our hearts and ask yourself that question, is this me? Is God calling me to do this? That might be the salvation experience that we're talking about right now of getting right with God and coming into right relationship with him. Right now, if you've never taken that step, if you've never surrendered your life to him, I want you to repeat a prayer after me right now and mean it with all of your heart and step into the the plans that God has for your life because you've been created with purpose. So today is the first day for you to step on that path that God has planned for your life. If that describes you and you desire to take that step, repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life completely to you forgive me for all of my sins and come into my life and be my Lord and Savior help me to live for you each and every day of the rest of my life In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, whether you're here in this room or listening online, God did exactly what you asked him to do. And you are now a child of Almighty God. In the next days and weeks, there's going to be some questions that you might have. And so we have this book for you free of charge. It's right through this door on the right-hand side on the countertop all the way to the right. They're free of charge. Grab one of these. Take it home with you. Read it. Study it. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer those for you. If you're listening online, we also have this book for you. Just write free book down in the comments section, and we'll send one of these out to you. Maybe you've never been baptized with the Holy Spirit, what we've been talking about today. Maybe you've never had that experience. This morning in the first service, there were a number of people who came up to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And so if you've never had that experience, I just invite you up. I believe that that is for you and that is for today. And so if you've never experienced the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I'm just going to ask the ministry team to come on up right now. And if you have a need in that area and you want to take that step, there's absolutely no pressure. But if you'd like to take that step, we'd like you to come up and receive prayer. 
we're going to sing one more song together. And I'm just going to also open up the altar for anybody that has any prayer requests whatsoever. And so if there's any needs that you have and you need somebody to stand with you in prayer, we'd like to invite you to come up as well as we sing this last song. Let's stand and worship together. Awaken.